Radio TV Phono Nut here, and we have this old phone book from 1977, and I thought we'd open it up to the TV repair section in the yellow pages and have a look at some of the old TV repair shop ads. TV and radio dealers. A to Z TV, they were around a long time. I think they went out in the went out of business in the early nineties. Old cable TV provider, T V selection system, they're now Comcast. Back then that's when the cable was under ten dollars a month. You had way less channels back then, but the quality of programming was better. When we had the cable turned off, I believe in 2014, it was about 75 or 80 dollars a month for basic cable, and there wasn't nothing on it but 150 channels of crap. You know, McAllister and Sons TV Service, the longtime Zenith dealer, uh, they shut they shut down a few years ago. In fact, I used to get junk TVs from them. The stuff that, for whatever reason, the customer didn't want to have fixed, they'd give them to me. RCA TV shop, TV headquarters. Let's see what else we got here. Quasar works in a drawer color TV. Authorized sales and service. And then RCA, what's this ad for? Uh, Woody's TV Service. I think they went out of business in the late 80s. They He sold his shop to a another fella that had worked at several TV shops over the years and then when that fella closed his shop down he started working for McAllister and, and that's whenever I started getting all of their junk yeah we're just into dealers we hadn't even got into the repair section yet now ah, here we are Irby's Television Service, established 1936. I think they went out of business in around 1981 or so, so that was a pretty long run for them. I would have loved to have seen what all was in his shop whenever he closed it down. Yep. Television and radio supplies and parts, Hooper Electronics Supply, they recently went out of business. And then we also had Risher Radio Supply Company. I think they left here in the mid-80s and went to Philadelphia, Mississippi. We also had a Lafayette store here and a Radio Shack. Now we have none of that, so there's no place left to even go buy basic electronic parts anymore. TV stations, WHTV, that's now WMDN, which is CBS, and then Channel 11, which is WTOK, they're still around, but they're ABC only now. Here's a couple more Ads for TV shops, Magnavox, color, black and white, stereo, service on all makes. Admiral Curtis Mathis, GE, Magnavox, Motorola, Emerson, Philco, RCA, Silvertone, Trutone, Westinghouse, Sylvania, Zenith, Quasar, and others. And point radio and TV service, yeah, back then people actually had radios fixed. Eight tracks. What's an eight track? What's an eight track player? 
Ward's Discount TV Service, Sylvania TV Sale, Sylvania Electrophonic RCA and Sound Design. Marty's TV Service, Authorized Magnavox Service, Color and Black and White Service, Total Service on all Magnavox Components. Now, Mr. Marty, he passed away about, I guess, about 10 years ago, and I met him after he retired. He had worked out of his house for years, and he only serviced Magnavox TVs. That's all he would work on, and he was still able to make a good living at it. Just shows you how much things have changed in today's world. If you even have a TV shop open, I don't think you could limit yourself to just one brand, but Mr. Martis only worked on Magnavox. If it wasn't a Magnavox, he turned them around at the door. And then we have Williams Electronics Service. I remember them. I think they went out of business in the late 80s sometime. And then we have this newer phone book from 2016. Let's open it up and see how many TV shops were left by the Television Repair and Service, Advanced Systems. I'm not even sure they're still open. I used to get a lot of sets from them. TV Electronic Service, I can tell you they're no longer in business. And there's another one that's not listed. Precision Electronics, I can't even tell you if they're in business or not still. I know the sign is no longer in front of their building, but the last time I talked to him, he told me that 98% of his business was warranty repair on modern flat screen TVs, and they will not accept CRT sets of any kind for repair. And he said, for the most part, once the warranty runs out on a TV, people just throw them away and buy a new one. But for all intents and purposes, we have no TV repair shops left in the area, and we have no places to buy electronic parts. So it really doesn't matter if you buy the $89 Walmart special or you buy the $3,000 Whizbang TV if it goes out then you're probably going to be up a creek without a paddle as far as getting it fixed. Unless it's a case like several years ago at the end of the CRT era when a friend of mine bought a 25-inch Apex TV from Walmart and it went out under warranty and Walmart told him the only way he could get it fixed under warranty would be to box it up and send it back to uh, the manufacturer at his expense, of course, and he said, that's crazy, I'd pay more to ship the TV than what I paid for the set. So I ended up fixing it for him. It was a shorted rectifier diode off of the switch mode power transformer, and that got him back in business, and I don't know how long it lasted after that. Yeah, here's an ad for the Lafayette store. And they also carried tubes, transistors, parts, and such. But by the early 80s, they were pretty much a thing of the past. And there was another shop that I didn't mention that's not listed in here, uh, Miles TV Service. He was the General Electric man. He went out of business in the early 90s because of failing health. And, and then he, had a, he died from complications of heart trouble. And he wasn't all that old at the time, in his, I think, late 50s, but he was also very good to me as far as helping me out whenever I was a young teenager. And then I had another friend, Mr. Summerlin. He's also no longer with us, who had a TV shop out of his home in the 70s up through the 90s. And he used to tell me stories how back in the 70s, he used to pick up used TVs and fix them and sell them, and they sold like hotcakes. didn't matter what kind they were, tube, solid state, black and white, color, remote, standard rotary tuner. It didn't make a difference. If it worked, he could sell it, and he could get a good price for it. In fact, he told me a 19-inch black and white would bring anywhere from $75 to $100, depending on what kind of condition it was in, and a basic 19 inch color TV like this with just a rotary mechanical tuner 
you know, about 125 for one of those, and if it was a remote set, even more, in a color 25-inch console TV, you figure 150 to 200, maybe more if it was a solid-state remote set. But then the 1980s came along, and you know TVs were still pretty expensive then. But by the mid to late 80s, the bottom was was starting to fall out. I had one TV repairman tell me that he saw the writing on the wall when the, he saw the first 19-inch color TVs for under 300 bucks. I remember in 1987, my dad bought a 13-inch Emerson color TV with a rotary tuner for $149, and at that time, that was a good price for a color TV. And then by the mid-90s, of course, they were just getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and then by the early to mid-2000s, the flat screens had taken over, and of course, they were high when they first come out, but now you can buy a flat screen for practically nothing. As a teenager, I used to pick up these old sets and fix them up and sell them, and I can remember in my own doings, you know, getting 75 bucks easy for something like this, but not anymore. I pretty much saw the writing on the wall when I had a 19-inch Toshiba remote control cable-ready TV that I wanted 10 bucks for. Woman come to look at it, and as soon as she found out it didn't have AV input jack, she wouldn't buy it. And I tried to explain to her how to get around that, but she wasn't interested. And I thought to myself, yeah, for the high price of $10, it has to have every feature known to man on it. And then not long after that, somebody gave me a 32-inch Sanyo TV real nice looking set with the remote and owner's manual and everything. It had a shorted horizontal output transistor and some bad capacitors and I fixed it and I think I had about 10 bucks in parts in it. Couldn't even get that out of it. Eventually tried giving it away and nobody would take it because it was not a flat screen. And then I finally found a lady who wanted it who collect stuff for the needy and she figured she might could pass it on to somebody so I gave it to her and that's pretty much when I stopped messing with them in fact right now I've got a 32 inch Westinghouse flat screen from 2018 that I acquired works perfectly low hour set I put it on the baby clothes and cell phone pages on Facebook for 65 bucks and the only thing I've gotten is people wasting my time. You'll get a laugh out of this. I got one message from some chick asking me what I accept $58.50 for it, which is an odd offer to make. Well, a long time ago, I made a rule, no negotiating unless you're here in person. I'm not going to waste time with you over the phone or over, over the Internet and then you never even show up. If you want to deal with me, you come look at what you're buying and we'll deal. So before I answered this woman, I got on her Facebook page and it says she lives in Los Angeles, California. Now, unless she's got some kind of magical powers, I don't think she's going to... I don't think she's going to just simply zip on over to my house in Mississippi and buy a, a television. So I just ignored and blocked her. But... Uh, fellow at the pawn shop told me one time, he said, I will not take in any TV that's over two years old, and it's got to be a smart TV, he said, because if it's over two years old and or if it's not a smart TV, people just will not buy them, at least not for any amount of money that makes it worth my while. So I said, yeah, things have come a long way since the era of uh, when we could sell any kind of TV we could get our hands on. Now everybody wants the latest and the greatest, and they don't want to pay nothing for it. Now I realize the newer, some of the newer flat screens have a really nice picture on some of them and have a lot of features on them, but as far as durability and ease of repair, you can't beat these older type like this. In fact, the TV I watch the most is a Zenith from 1984, 
and it suits my knees just fine. Now the very first TV that I was ever given and actually fixed was a 17 inch or actually it's a 16 inch RCA identical to this one. Well for all I know this may be the same set but somebody gave it to me back around 89 and it didn't take much to get it going just cleaning the pots and the tuners and I watched that set in my room for a good while until I found a 19 inch Philco Ford black and white that had UHF on it so I advertised this set on a radio call-in program for 25 bucks and a younger guy came right over here and he said I just got married I don't have a lot of money and I need a TV and he said I don't care that it's old and it's black and white I need a TV and you know that's just how much times have changed nowadays even the young poor newlywed couples would turn their nose up at anything that wasn't a flat screen high definition TV I, in fact even before the flat screens came out there have been times I've tried to give TVs to people who supposedly were needy only to have them refuse them because they weren't big enough or didn't have this feature or didn't have that feature or they were too old or whatever you know and I'm thinking to myself well if you were that needy you'd be happy with whatever you could get you know if my house had burned down and I didn't have anything and somebody gave me a 12 inch black and white TV I'd be happy to get it but there again that's the difference between me and a lot of other people and one day you will see a repair video on this one. This one was given to me by one of the estate sale ladies after a sale. Of course, nobody bought it, so I wound up with it, and I was glad to get it because, you know, for sentimental reasons, even though it's probably not the same TV, but it's one just like it. And the first color set I ever fixed was a Zenith 19-inch Chroma Color 2 remote set and I have one of those too buried. I can't get it out right now. But yeah, so what happened to the TV repair shops and the reason you can't get rid of any used TVs is because everybody sold out to foreign interest to maximize profits for the shareholders and because the uh, average consumer wants cheap, cheap, cheap. You know, they don't care about quality, just build it as cheap as possible and and then by the time it breaks, something new and exciting will be out, and I can just go buy another piece of Chinese-made junk. All right, here's a little Westinghouse TV that I don't think has had much use on it. The remote's not dirty, and it still has the plastic protective film around the edges. Yeah, it was bought in 2018, and I believe the guy who bought it died not too long after that, and then the friend of mine who ended up with it. It's just been sitting in his shed for all this time and then he just passed it on to me. So, but yeah, I'd take less than 65, but you know, it's a crying shame when when you advertise a nice working 32 inch TV and can't even get any bites on it. That, and I mean, that just shows you where things are today. And, you know, this all started, what, late 60s, early 70s, when the Japanese started dumping cheap color TVs off on the American market for just to saturate the market. And then, and then you know, in the late, late 70s and into the 80s, you had the companies like Samsung and Daewoo and Gold Star dumping their uh, crap on us. And then... All the old companies like Zenith and RCA and Magnavox, they ended up selling out to foreign interest, you know, to make the shareholders happy, maximize profits for them, I suppose. And then combine that with the American public shifting from shifting from wanting a quality product to wanting the cheapest possible price, and this is what you get. But yeah, the main advantage to these flat screens is when they quit working, it's, they're so lightweight that it's real easy to toss one over in the dumpster and not get a hernia from doing so, but there you go. 
So yeah, I thought you'd get a kick out of seeing the old TV shop ads and the phone book and uh, listen to me ranting and raving about how the TV repair and sales market has gone to heck in a handbasket over the years. And But as far as this TV, I'm probably just going to pull the ad and just keep it here in case one of the flat screens we have takes a dump. I can put this one in its place and that'll be something we won't have to buy so you know it's a win-win situation generally I'm not one to leave something listed for sale on Facebook marketplace forever and a day if I don't get some hits some serious hits in about a week that sucker's probably going to come down and I'll do something else with it I suppose I could put it up there for five or ten bucks or even free but then I'd get all the bottom feeders that just really want to waste your time and I've been down that road before you know listing I remember one time I listed a pile of free radios and record players and stuff I knew I'd never get to some of it was good for parts and pretty much all I got was people wanting close-up pictures of everything and specific model numbers and I'm thinking yes you can look the stuff up on eBay and see if it's worth ten fortunes before you uh waste your time coming over here to get it so that's pretty much why I don't even bother listing stuff for free anymore because you just get too much too many flakes and you know too many people that want to want something for nothing and when they find out it's not worth ten fortunes you never hear from them again